Do you wanna use YouTube's A-B thumbnail testing actually effectively to grow your channel? Well, this is your complete guide to YouTube's thumbnail test and compare feature. There are some specific strategies that you need to know to be able to get the best results. So I've been using this feature for the past several months as part of the beta, and it's now becoming widely available to everyone. So what I'm gonna do in this video is walk you through best practices and actually show you my results from the past several months so that you you can understand the differences in what you will see and what it all means. So how does this process work exactly? Well, you're going to upload two to three thumbnail variations and the system is going to run a random test. It's going to display different thumbnails to different people. And after two weeks of testing, it's going to end the test and choose a winner. Maybe. I'm going to get back to this in a second, but you're going to get one of three results from the test. Now, in that two week time frame, if there is a clear winner at any time, such as the system sees that there's a huge, large difference of people clicking only one thumb, it's going to end the test early and declare that one the winner. Note that this only applies to on-demand video uploaded, not live streams or even saved live streams, at least not yet. Now, in terms of how the results are calculated and the winner is chosen, there's definitely been some confusion over for that. Most people expected thumbnail test and compare to be based on CTR or click-through rate because that's what other tools do. And if you're not familiar with click-through rate, that is the ratio of people who are seeing it, the impressions of your thumbnail versus how many people actually click that. That is how you get your CTR. But YouTube programmed this feature differently. It's not based on click-through rate. It is based off of watch time. And watch Watch time is the length of time that people are watching your video. The reason it's based off of watch time instead of CTR is that click-through rate can lead to clickbait, meaning if it's based off of CTR alone, then you as the creator are going to naturally design to get the most clicks possible. And when you do that, you focus on things that will earn that click. And while that is super important, you should be aiming to get the click. If that's the only thing you're rewarded for, then there is a tipping point of, oh my gosh, I've got to do whatever it takes. And that can lead you to click bait. But if the content doesn't deliver on the promise of the thumbnail, then watch time is naturally going to go down the drain and people aren't going to watch the video. And if that happens, algorithmically, thumbnail testing aside, you aren't going to get the views that you want. The video is going to tank and guess what? CTR, click-through rate, doesn't even matter anymore at that point. So YouTube is here trying to balance these efforts and reward system and design it for the best possible results. And it's not a perfect system, of course, no system is right out of the gate, but they will continue to improve it over time with more and more users putting it through its paces. Now, once the test is complete, you're going to get one of three possible results. And those are the test finished without a conclusive result, the test is complete and there is a winner chosen, or one thumbnail was preferred but with limited confidence. Let me dig into all three of these with actual examples. In this example, the test finished without a conclusive result and this just means that there's not enough data to draw conclusions one way or another so what it's going to do is default to choosing the first one you uploaded so always put the first thumbnail in there for the one that you want to display to everybody if this actually occurs i tend to get this result on low view count videos or low performers as you can see from this the first 24 hours my video was actually performing performing very under the average of my channel. But here's what's interesting. If you take a look at this as a lifetime, it, while it started off low, it actually started to take off and outperform my channel's average. But it didn't take off until after the two week period was done and the winner was chosen. So what I should have done is rerun that test as soon as I saw it take off. Because now that this video is being shown to a lot more people, it could have changed the results and by default, I could have potentially even gotten more views. The second result you might possibly get is test complete, winner has been chosen. And that means that that thumbnail that it chose as the winner got the most watch time. 
And what you can do with this information is really be aware of the differences in your thumbnail designs and maybe you wanna steer clear of designs that were low performers. You're gonna to wanna to experiment here because you might see drastically different thumbnail designs performing in this manner like this one that was very different and won as well as this one that had black and white versus color and the black and white won but you might see pretty drastic results in a winner on thumbnail designs that are very, very similar like this one, where really it's about the words on the thumbnail. In this case, the words of the winner actually hit on the emotions that my viewers were feeling at the time that this video took off. In other words, it was the exact words that they were using to ask the questions that made them find the video. And the third result you might get is one thumbnail was preferred, but with limited confidence. And this one confused me, so I'm gonna explain it to you. It was basically performing better, but not enough for the system to remain confident. If it had had more time than the two week period, a different thumbnail could have won. The way it was explained to me is if you're going to run a 100 meter race, one person is likely to win. If you're gonna go for a 200 meter race, then that second person might be able to catch up. So when you see this result, you can either run it again or just freaking move on and create more content. So if you want the best possible results with thumbnail test and compare for the entire lifetime of the video, not just on launch, here's what you should do. When you publish the video, run a thumbnail test to your loyal viewers, your core audience. These are people who are your subscribers, people who watch every video, people who are loyal. They are going to see your video first. And I want you to start with thumbnail designs that are already proven to attract your existing audience. If you don't know that yet, you will figure that out through testing, but that's the goal. Then after about three days or so, I want you to test different thumbnail designs for maybe a more casual audience and people who have watched a couple of your videos, but maybe they're not considered loyal yet. They could take you or leave you. <laughs> then if it's evergreen content, meaning people are gonna be searching it for years to come, or it's gonna be found years to come, you can revisit it much later in time for people who don't already know you. Things like your face versus not your face can perform differently for these different types of audiences. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to start a thumbnail test or manage the results, watch this video. And if you have a small channel or maybe you have lots of subscribers but get low view counts right now, click here to watch this video for small channel best practices and I will see you there.